See, it's not the wealth that gives you happiness. It's Christ who is the wealth. And that's why later on in, this, in, this, in these verses, he says, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The heart is the language of love. This is what the epistle of St. Paul was talking about speaking in tongues. Some people have misinterpreted this from its roots. And they call this gibberish language, the language of tongues. No such thing. With all love and respect, I'm crying out in the wilderness of this world, enough of this nonsense. The only language, please pay attention, the only language which Satan cannot understand is the language of love because he has no love in him. The moment he lost God, he lost love. Therefore, when you speak the language of love, Satan cannot fathom it. That is the speaking in tongues. And to prove this, after he said speaking in tongues, he comes and speaks about love, 1 Corinthians 13. He said, I'll show you a much greater way if I have no love in me, yet I give all my wealth to the poor and I put myself in fire and burn it and I have no love in me. I have achieved nothing. It's love. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. What is your treasure? Is it money? Your heart is going to be there. Is it wealth? Your heart is going to be there. Is it fame? Is it the throne? Is it you? Your heart will be there. But if Christ is your treasure, that's where your heart will be. Then, if Christ is your treasure, whether I am wealthy or poor, whether I am healthy or sick, I am happy. And this is the vows they make when they come to give themselves to one another. Uh, will you take her in sickness and in health, in richness and in poorness? And poor man says, yes, yes, yes. Has no idea what he's getting himself into. No idea. Because that's the language of love. You see, when the heart speaks, the mind goes to sleep. That's why you better love God with your heart first, later your mind. Because if you use your head, you cannot get to God. But what gets you to God is love. To know Him, it takes love. Your, your mind will get you to this realm. God is beyond and above this realm. God is non-tangible, He's spirit. So what are you looking for? You're looking for God in the wrong place. That's why some people insist on prove it to me that there is God. Oh. There's plenty of proofs. That's not our topic. Plenty of proofs. One of them is me. You know, ask yourselves, why am I still talking about the Lord and caring for him and loving him? Why? I went after him, right? I followed the Lord from a very young age. I was a, lit, I was a very young teenager. I never had friends. I never lived my teenage life like so many teenagers do. Never. I was always by myself for myself. And I chased after the Lord. I went after him. I received hell in church. And then after 30 odd years, I got deposed, kicked out and thrown in the street. And after almost 40 years, I lost my eye. So what have I gained? Chasing the Lord, kicks, punches, ridiculed, persecuted, dragged in the street, thrown outside, and then stabbed in the eye. And if you ask me, who is the soul and the only love of your life? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No, this needs to be every single one of you. Do you know why I still love him? Because he lives, he exists. That's why I am able to love him. If it wasn't for him, 
there is no human being can ever still remain in this particular way and this particular path. It takes God to make you strong, to stand in the waves and the turmoils of the world that brings to you forward, uh, that brings at you. It takes God. It's not me, it's the Lord. Otherwise I would have been gone with the wind. So when somebody asks the bishop, how can you love the person that hurt you? It's not me, it is Jesus Christ who dwells in me that has given me the will, the strength, the heart, the love to forgive my enemy, to forgive those who have hurt me. It takes God to be able for us to do that. Please wake up, stop focusing on this little piece of dust. I am a nothing. I am just that donkey which the king of kings sits on and rides wherever he wishes to go with this donkey. Wake up. So if they tell you stories centuries ago, well, there is one today in front of you. There is no excuse anymore. Why would I remain here? Why would I still be here? after everything that I've received. And it's been nothing short of hell, hell, unbearable hell, beyond your imagination. But I still say, Jesus is the love of my life. And I will always love him. Ah. Because he is the real deal. Because he truly exists. He is six foot one. Get it through your head if you're a Christian or not. And this was the whole crying out in the wilderness. I love every human being. I don't care what your religious background is. I love you. Whether you accept my Lord or not, I love you. I will always pray for you. And there is nothing going to be in my heart except love. You know why? Because Jesus is that love, not me. Jesus is that love. Jesus. He's six foot one. Long face, tan skin. Mediterranean, Jewish. He's not white. He's tan skin. He's got a brown crispy hair split in the middle all the way to the shoulders. He's got greenish bluish eyes, stunning. And his beard is short and it's brownish reddish, very short. After 2024 years, he is still 33 of age and still single and available seeking another soul to be his bride in holy matrimony. He wants to be with you in an intimate way. You're sitting in the church in the midst of hundreds, but he wants you. And he says to you, why are you looking around to see who is around you, in front of you, on your sides and behind you, who came in and who walked out? It is none of your business. Are you coming for me or for people? Are you coming for the bishop or the one who speaks through the bishop? Who are you coming for? Who is your treasure? Because whatever your treasure is and whoever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. And when you speak the language of the heart, the mind is switched off.